So here's my concern. Is that enough? In this competitive EV market, especially in China, missing delivery targets can be fatal. You've got Tesla, Zeker, and Xpong all ready to capitalize on any missteps. The competition's fierce and the opportunity is obviously fleeting. If Neo fails to scale production for the L60 quickly, they obviously risk falling behind and missing out on the first mover advantage could leave the door open for competitors to gain, gain more ground in this area. NEO needs to hit those December targets or risk losing its momentum. This is especially crucial for Envo's success because the market is looking at NEO stock and they're labeling Envo as NEO's brand revival. What do you think is going to happen to the share price if Envo is a complete flop? What do you think is going to happen to investor confidence if Envo doesn't do what it's supposed to do? I don't even have to answer that question. I'll let you think about it. So it's not just about one SUV. It's about setting the stage for everything that's going to come next. If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name is Obi and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, a channel where we talk about business and technology. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about some developments around NEO and its sub brand. As always, I'm here to give you the facts. I'm here to give you the coffee black, no sugar. So anyways, it's going to be a super interesting video, super insightful. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell icon and leave a comment down below. Your engagement really does help the channel reach a broader audience. Please share the video that helps out a ton as well. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So let's start with Neo's um, Envo L60. It's Neo's sub-brand. The L60 is a highly anticipated car. On paper, it looks like a winner. It's competitively priced at 206,900 RMB, which is around 29K in US dollar. And it's even cheaper if you opt for the battery as a service model, the option to rent the battery and just buy the vehicle. For context, that's a significant price cut compared to Tesla's Model Y, which has been a huge winner in the Chinese market priced at around 250,000 RMB starting. But something that's important to think about is can NEO meet the demand for this vehicle? There's a lot of hype around the L60 and for good reason. It has a large interior, bigger than the Tesla Model Y and Xpong's G6. Plus early dealer feedback is positive with Deutsche Bank already increasing their delivery targets from 8,000 to 10,000 units per month. That's great, right? But here's the catch. Can Neo actually deliver these cars? Remember the lesson, the tough lesson that we learned with the ET5. Production capacity can make or break a product line. You've seen competitors like Xiaomi crank over crank out over 10,000 units in just over 32 days. So the pressure is really on for Neo to avoid the bottlenecks that we've seen in the past. Lee Ben, Neo CEO, even um, admitted that while deliveries are starting in September, which is this month, they're not expecting um, big deliveries until the fourth quarter of this year. So what's his goal? 20,000 units to be delivered in Q4 with 10,000 uh, coming just out of December alone. So here's my concern. Is that enough? In this competitive EV market, especially in China, missing delivery targets can be fatal. You've got Tesla, Zeker, and Xpong all ready to capitalize on any missteps. The competition's fierce and the opportunity is obviously fleeting. If Neo fails to scale production for the L60 quickly, they obviously risk falling behind and missing out on the first mover advantage could leave the door open for competitors to gain, gain more ground in this area. Neo needs to hit those December targets or risk losing its momentum. This is especially crucial for Envo's success because the market is looking at Neo stock and they're labeling Envo as Neo's brand revival. What do you think is going to happen to the share price if Envo is a complete flop? What do you think is going to happen to investor confidence if Envo doesn't do what it's supposed to do? 
I don't even have to answer that question. I'll let you think about it. So it's not just about one SUV. It's about setting the stage for everything that's going to come next. Now, Deutsche Bank recently pointed out something very interesting. They believe that the success of Envo is critical for reviving the entire Neo brand. Why? It all comes down to Neo's NT 3.0 technology. The L60 is the first model to debut on this platform. And it's a big deal for two reasons, performance and cost savings. The NT 3.0 platform not only uh, brings an upgrade in uh, technology, but it also helps NEO cut down on production costs. This means that Envo and NEO will share a cost competitive supply chain, which is expected to improve vehicle margins 25% for NEO, 15% for Envo. And that's definitely a strong foundation for profitability. The cost sharing model between NEO and Envo is a smart move. It allows NEO to enter a more cost friendly segment while also maintaining its premium image. It's almost like Tesla's strategy with the model. Model 3 and the Model Y, get people in the ecosystem with a lower priced vehicle and then upsell them on premium features. If Neo can pull this off, they're setting themselves up for long-term success. But again, it all hinges on executing this strategy smoothly. Shifting gears a bit, let's talk about some international news. There's been speculation that Neo might take over Audi's Brussels factory. That was the, the rumor floating around that um, obviously I covered it on the channel uh, in a video earlier this week. So we come back and correct these things when we get more information. Now, this rumor started to, to gain traction when the Belgian media uh, reported that Neo is uh, supposedly a candidate for the purchase of this factory, which is set to close when, uh, Audi, when Audi stops selling the Q8 e-tron next year. This rumor made sense off the surface, especially with the rising European tariffs on Chinese EVs. Having a local uh, production facility could have helped to mitigate those costs. But Lee Bin was quick to shut down those rumors, saying that if Audi can't afford a factory, what makes you think that Neo could afford a factory? this factory and honestly i thought the same thing but at the same time i thought they were going to run to the capital markets uh and start raising capital to lose shares they're no stranger to that to be fair but he also emphasized that neo's cautious about uh cautious about investing in fixed assets outside of battery swapping stations i think that lee ben is playing it smart here though fixed asset investments like factories are large financial commitments and right now we all know that neo needs to stay nimble no europe is a strategic market for NEO, but we also know that they're in the early stages of this expansion. Right now, NEO should focus on scaling its battery swapping infrastructure, which is their real competitive advantage in markets like Europe. Taking on a massive factory like that might stretch them too thin, especially when they're still getting their feet under them in China with Envo. So what does this all mean for NEO as a company? The launch of the Envo L60 could be a pivotal moment, but that's if NEO is able to meet its uh, production targets. It could set the stage for the revival of the brand as a whole. The NT 3.0 platform is key to uh, reducing cost and uh, fast forwarding their technology. Ultimately, it's critical for NEO's long term profitability. But as we've seen with the ET5, execution matters. NEO needs to ensure that supply chain delays and production delays. Don't slow them down this time around. With fierce competition from Tesla, Xpong, Zeker, um, Xiaomi, any minor slip up could be very costly. At the end of the day, I'm optimistic here on Envo, but cautiously slow. Cautiously so. Neil's got all the right pieces on the board on the board, but they need to execute flawlessly to maintain their edge in this evolving market. Anyways, that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning into Courtside Financial. Happy Friday. I hope you found this uh insightful, useful, helpful, at the very least entertaining. Uh, I hope everyone has a good weekend and we'll catch you next week with more content. Thanks for watching. Obi signing off. Bye.